Hey again, guys, it's Mr. Zigner. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 1-4 in the Math Connects book, seventh grade, order of operations. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see here with all the examples, our focus is simply using the order of operations. Two vocab we'll be defining in our student built glossaries would be numerical expression and order of operations. Okay, so the order of operations. Probably by now you've heard the typical thing many teachers ask you to memorize so that you can remember the order of operations, the order in which you should solve problems to get the same answer that everyone else is going to get, which is also, of course, the right answer. And that's that, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, you're not locked into that, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. My favorite one is purple eggplants make delicious afternoon snacks. So if you like that, you're welcome to use that instead. Or you can make up your own. That's probably the best way to go. If you have your own way of remembering those steps to the order of operations, I'm sure that'll sink in and really help you. So those little ways of remembering the order of operations stand for, of course, parentheses. Anything in parentheses must be solved first. Then you look for your exponents, solving any exponential form expressions. <clears throat> then you want to multiply and divide from left to right and finish up with any adding or subtracting, again, from left to right. Up here at the top, you can see the book worded it slightly differently. They want you to evaluate expressions inside grouping symbols. In this case, the grouping symbols are the parentheses. Evaluate all powers. That would be the exponents. Multiply and divide, both, in order from left to right. A big thing here is some people think when you say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that you should multiply before you divide. Actually, it's whichever one comes first, again, from left to right. Same thing with the adding and subtracting. You say Aunt Sally, or in the case of mine, afternoon snacks. Well, you don't necessarily add before you subtract. It's again, whichever one comes first, from left to right. So let's try this one out. You can see already the answer is going to be seven, but how do you solve it? Well, step one would be to take care of our parentheses. So we take care of our 18 plus two first. You can see here that's of course 20. Now we can finish the problem with 27 minus 20 and 27 minus 20 is, is seven. Let's try one out ourselves. See if you can stay one step ahead of me as I slowly solve this one for you. All right, so we have 45 minus, in parentheses, 26 plus 3. Step one is parentheses, so I'm going to solve those. 26 plus 3 is 29. I'm just going to bring down this 45 minus. So now we're at 45 minus 29. Now, if you can look at it um, horizontally like this and solve it, then just turn it vertically. So we reset the problem up as 45 minus 29. Now we're going back to our regrouping that we learned some years ago. Crossing those off. 3, 15. So 15 minus 9 is, of course, 6. 3 minus 2, 1, and we end up with our answer of 16. Another example, 15 plus 5 times 3, that's what that big dot is here, minus 2. So step 1, they walk us through it. We're going to multiply the 5 and the 3. There's 5 times 3 is 15. Next step is to add the two 15s. 15 plus 15 is, of course, 30. Now we're finally going to subtract 2 from the 30, and 30 minus 2 is 28. All 
our turn again. So we have our 32 <clears throat> minus 3 times 7 plus 4. So what's the first thing we should do? You can see we have choices, but only one of those choices is the right first step. Do we have any parentheses? Don't see any. Any exponents? Not yet. Any multiplying or dividing? Yes, we do have our 3 times 7. So that's the first thing we want to take care of. 3 times 7 is 21. Now we bring everything else down. So we still have our 32 minus our 21 plus our 4 at the end. OK, so we took care of multiplying and no dividing. Last is adding and subtracting. But again, it's not add first, then subtract. It's adding and subtracting from left to right. So in this problem, our subtraction comes first. So we have 32 minus 21. That's, of course, 11. And we bring our plus 4 down. Oh, here it comes. And 11 plus 4 is 15. There we go. So our answer was B, 15. Another example. Oh, looks like they're going to include exponents now. 12 times 3 minus 2 squared. First step is to find the value of 2 squared. They did that right here for us. 2 squared is 2 to the second power, which means you're multiplying two twos together, which is 4. Now we're going to multiply the 12 and the 3. So 12 times 3 is 36. Bring down that minus 4. And finally, we finish by subtracting 4 from 36. And we end up with our 32. Our turn. So we have 9 times 5 plus 3 squared. Step 1, any parentheses? No parentheses. Second step, any exponents? Yes, we have 3 squared. On our previous video, we learned that 3 squared here is not 3 times 2, but actually means there are two threes being multiplied. That's, of course, 9. So we end up bringing a 9 down here for the 3 squared, but also bring down the rest of the problem. Next step. Now that we've taken care of our exponents, we're looking for multiplying and dividing. And we have that, 9 times 5. 9 times 5 is, of course, 45. And once again, bring everything else down. Don't try to solve too many things at once. I'm a fan, a big fan of doing one part of the problem and then bringing everything else down. You might feel that involves a lot of writing. And I, might, I, I would agree with you on that. However, most people will make mistakes when they're trying to do too many things at once in that problem. So take your time, one thing at a time, bring everything else down, you have a much better chance of getting that right answer. Finally, we finish up with our 45 plus 9, and that's 54. So it looks like our answer is B. Moving on. Another example here, we're taking 28, dividing it by the difference of 3 and 1 to the second power. Now they walk us through this. First, we're going to subtract 1 from 3 inside of our parentheses. That's, of course, 2. Now we're going to find the value of 2 squared, which is, of course, 4. Finally, finish by dividing. 28 divided by 4 is 7. Our turn. So we have 36 divided by Oops, 14 minus 11 squared. Step one, let's go through those order of operations. Do we have any parentheses? Sure. 14 minus 11. 14 minus 11 is, of course, 3. Now let's bring everything else down. We have our 36 divided by 3. Bah, but let's not forget our exponent, 3 squared. Next step. Exponents. Yes, we do have exponents. So we take our 3 and we raise it to the second power. 3 to the second power, I think we had that on a previous slide, is 9. Bring down our 36. 
and our division sign. Finishing with 36 divided by 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4. <clears throat> Looks like the answer was B. Ah, a little word problem. A real world problem. Let's see how real this one is. All right. What is the total cost of two boxes of favors, two boxes of balloons, and six rolls of crepe paper? All right. So I want two boxes of favors. All right, so I'm gonna multiply two times the price of the favors. That's $7 each. So I need two times seven. Plus, now I need two boxes of balloons. Well, each box is $5, so I wanna buy two of those. So two times $5 plus six rolls of crepe paper. Well, I think they're trying to trick me here into doing the wrong thing because I can see right here, three rolls cost $2. But of course, I want six rolls. Six rolls. Well, if I multiply two times this three, I'll get six. So let's see here. If I multiply the price by two, just like I multiplied the number of rolls by two, I get four. So it looks like six rolls of crepe paper are gonna cost me $4. But how I guess I would write that would be, I would need two sets of those three rolls, which each, each cost $2. All right, let's simplify this problem. Well. I don't have any parentheses, I don't have any exponents, but I do have some multiplying. Two times seven is 14, plus, I have my two times five is 10, plus my two times two, which is four. Now, finally, no dividing, but I do have my adding to finish things up. So we're gonna add from left to right. 14 plus 10, 24, plus the extra four, there's my 28. So it looks like these supplies are going to cost us $28. Well, that's gonna wrap things up today. Please uh, complete the follow-up questions on my website, which is listed right here, mattzinger.com slash home slash seventh grade math with little hyphens in between each of those words. It's right there on my website on the seventh grade math page. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th Grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzinger.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.